Number 79. A chemist's 50 trillion angstrom run, C exercise 1.78, would be an archaeologist's 10,900 cubit run. How long is one cubit in meters and in feet? So they want two specific conversions. So they want a conversion for meters and they want a conversion for feet. And they want to know how long one cubit is. So that's basically the overall question here. How long is one cubit? And we need to put it into meters. And we also want to find out how long it would be in feet. Okie dokie. So here, the key is to read in between the lines. Now, they say, see exercise 1.78. Um, we did a 50 trillion angstrom run, which was in number 78, obviously. So if you haven't done that one, go back and check it out. Um, but you don't really need to know that information for this type of problem. Because they say that a chemist's 50 trillion angstrom run is, or would be, so equal to 10,900 cubit run. So there, they're giving you a conversion, but they're giving it to you in words. 50 trillion angstrom would be, so equal to 10,900 cubit run. So we just got to figure out what 50 trillion is. So it would be 50, but then I think four sets of three zeros because this is the hundreds, this is the thousands, this is the millions, this is the billions, and finally you're in the trillions range. So if I had to put this into scientific notation, this would be 5.0 times 10 to the, um, I believe it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 angstrom. So we could make a ratio for this. We could say that, you know, 5.0 times 10 to the 13th angstrom equals 10,900 cubit. But we don't like to use that in chemistry. We like to use our ratios. So we can say that 5.0 times 10 to the 13th angstrom is equal to 10,900 cubit. Or, since they're exactly the same, we can just vice versa it and say 10,900 cubit equals 5.0 times 10 to the 13th angstrom. Oop. Okay. So we're going to use those conversion factors to figure out how long one cubit would be. So let's do our roadmap here. So the only way that we could go from one cubit, and I hope I'm saying that right, um, two meters is, I would have to go to angstroms first. And because of this conversion factor that we made, I can go from cubit to angstrom. So that would be step number one. Then they tell us that one angstrom equals one times 10 to the negative eight centimeters. So I can use that to get out of angstroms and into centimeters. So that would be step two. And then I can use my SI unit conversion that I should have memorized to go to meters. That's step number three. So that's the first part. So let's check it out. One cubit, I don't want cubit anymore, so times by a ratio, cubit goes on the bottom, angstrom goes up on top, and from the one that we just did, 5.0 times 10 to the 13 angstrom is equal to 10,900 cubit, so... You could say 5.0 times 10 to the 13th angstrom is equal to 10,900 cubit. So that crosses off. And now we're done with part one. So now we can move on. So times by a ratio again. We don't want angstrom anymore. That goes on the bottom. And centimeter goes up on the top. And we're using this conversion factor. One angstrom. So one angstrom equals 1 times 10 to the negative 8th centimeters. So 1 times 10 to the negative 8th centimeters. And the angstroms go bye-bye. And now we have to use that SI unit conversion. Centimeters on the bottom, meters up top. I didn't give it to you guys. You guys should know it. So I'm going to just put it over here. 
You guys know what it is. Centimeters to meters? You could say 100 centimeters equals 1 meter, or you could say 1 centimeter equals 10 to the negative 2 meters. Um, I will use the first one. Doesn't matter to me. You pick whichever one you want. So I'll put 100 centimeters equals 1 meter, and that cancels out the centimeters, and you're left with meters. So multiply the top, simplify, multiply the bottom, simplify, and then finally divide. So when you get the top, 5 times 10 to the 13th times 1 times 10 to the negative 8th, you get 5.0 times 10 to the, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, divided by 10,900 times 100 is 1.09 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now we can divide the two numbers. So 5 times 10 to the 5th divided by 1.09 times 10 to the 6th, and you get 0 0.4587. Now we just have to use the correct number of sig figs. It was one cubit, so there's literally one sig fig here. So you would only need one sig fig here, so the four, but the five would turn the four into a five. So this would just be 0 0.5 meters. So that's the answer to the first one. So 0 0.5 meters. Now we just got to go from, you know, 0.5 meters into feet. So 0 0.5 meters into feet. Let's see. So this is a unit of length. So I'm scanning here and I see nothing to do with feet. But on my common conversions that I should know, I should know that there are three feet in one yard. In that case, I can use this first conversion. I can not go to feet directly, but I could go to yards, and then I can go to feet. So let's try it out. 0 0.5 meters times by the ratio meters goes on the bottom, yards goes up on top. If you want to use the first one, 1 meter equals 1.0936, so that cancels out the meters. You have yards now, but multiply by that ratio, yards goes on the bottom, feet goes up on top. 3 feet equals 1 yard, so 3 feet equals 1 yard, and you can just simplify. So 0 0.5 times 1.0936 times 3 you get 1.64 feet, but since there was technically one sig fig here, there should be one sig fig here, so the one, but the six will round that up to two. So this would be two feet. So, how long is one cubit? One cubit is a half of a, a meter, 0.5 meters, and it's also two feet. Guys, I hope this helped you out a lot. If it did, click that subscribe button. We got tons more questions coming your way. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're on the playlist, I'll see you in three, two, one, go.